I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Perfect. Okay, so I'm here with Jed Paolo, who's going to be fighting this weekend at your fighting championship. You're going to be fighting for a belt. You're going to be fighting in the main event as well. So I believe, I don't know if uh, that's what you've been told. Were you notified yourself? No. No, okay, well, there you go. You got from what I believe, I don't know if things have changed, but I'm pretty sure you will be. Um, Unless they found a replacement for the two fights that were pulled out from. I think it's going to be quite difficult to, like, for, for women, for the female scene. There's not a huge amount of women, especially the, with the experience Sarah has. Um, and then with Brian, there's not a whole lot of middleweights. But look, hopefully, if Deck, you can pull them out of fire, you can pull them out of fire. If not, as we stand. But, to, but take away even the main event and, and the belt. Your activity level has been quite high this year. Uh, you, you told me when you came in, you wanted to be quite high. How have you felt and what have you kind of learned over your past couple of fights? Obviously, there's going to be wins and losses, um, ups and downs. What What's your biggest takeaway so far from kind of the early stages of your amateur career? Mm, like, no matter the result, you just keep pushing forward. Like, win or loss, you keep pushing forward because at this level, you just want that experience. Like, no matter what it is, you just need to be able to keep going. That's all this really is. Yeah, and obviously you have fought Michael previously on Cage Conflict and you won the split decision. Are you excited to be fighting him again? Because he believes, obviously, that he felt the fight should have went to him. Um, do you think this is a chance to kind of put a stamp on it and then, like, see it out completely that there's, without a shadow of a doubt, that you are the better fighter on the night? Yeah, like, it's a chance to put it as 2 and all, like, just put a big full stop on it because... The last fight, we both felt like I felt I could have done a lot more standing up and all that shit. And then he felt he could have done a lot more strikes wise because I think I probably took like throughout those nine minutes, three or four strikes at most, to be honest, off him. Like, but off my back, I was striking a lot more and all that. But it's just all about activity. So, yeah, we both know what we need to do this time around. So, we're just going to try and put a big full stop to it. Yeah, that's what this is. All oh, this is yeah, like I wanted the rematch since. Like, I remember after the fight, sorry, after the fight, I was saying to him and to his coaches, rematch, let's run it back. And yeah, uh, I remember texting him the day after the fight, and he did say he didn't really see the point in rematching an amateur because he just wants to fight as many people as he can. And I did understand that, like, it's very understandable from his point of view. So yeah, I said, yeah. And then when Darren texted me saying, I have a fight for you. If you want to take it, said Michael's name, said title fight. I said, yeah, like I don't really care about the title, to be honest. I just want to get the rematch. That's all it was. And yeah, I took it. Yeah. And like that, it's, it's rare you do see rematches at amateur. They're very, they're, they don't really call for that much. Like I said, amateurs want to go out and feel different bodies and different positions and, and kind of uh, trying to experience as much as they can. But with this, obviously, the way it's landed, um, it like I said, not that you don't care about the belt so much, but with a win and a victory on the belt, just say usually the belt brings uh a lot more activity because a lot more people are gonna fight for it. A lot more people are gonna come in last minute, like yourself. You actually came in and uh, not last minute, but you came in on a relatively short space of time. Do you think if you were able to capture the title on Saturday or Sunday, sorry, that it would then help you in your quest to be quite active this year because a lot of people want will want to fight you for the belt. Mm, yes, I know. Like without the title, I'm still gonna be active this year. That's regardless. Because the one thing Darren's good for is getting me fights. Like he'd be able to get me matched for anybody, to be honest. So, mm, to answer the question, it doesn't doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter whether I have the title or not. Like obviously, it'd be good to have a title there. It'd be good to have a title in my Arsenal. But the most important thing right now is not even caring about the title. It's about getting this win on Sunday. Like. And do you feel that this fight will be a complete contrast and difference to the last fight? Because you said yourself that you felt you could have done more. Uh, he said to you, I believe, that you, he felt he could have done more. Do you think this is going to be more of... Uh, this is going to be a completely different fight than the last one because of I, because of that? Yeah, I feel like it's two different fighters this time around. Like, Michael knows what he needs to do this time. I know what I need to do this time. But it's all about going out and finishing it. Like, I felt... In the last fight, I came out a bit too aggressive as I should have. So this time, it's going to be a bit more of controlled violence. Like I'm looking to go in there and really implement my game plan. And you will see that on Sunday. You'll see 
I'll be a lot more calmer. I won't be forcing things where you shouldn't be forcing it. Like it's just so many small things, so many small changes that I'll be making, so many small changes that he'll be making, and we'll see who comes out on top on Sunday. Yeah, because it's usually the small changes that make the bigger differences. And and like that, every fight that you've fought so far, whether it's been a win or a loss, and like that, you've just described to me what you kind of took away from it. Have you been taking that away from every fight? And then have you been seeing yourself? Can you, can you like, because I like, obviously when you get from, just say your debut to here, you've improved a lot. Can you see that as it happens? Like, do you realize that as it happens? Yeah. You just kind of go, oh, fuck, I didn't realize I'd got this far. You realize it as it happens, but you still don't realize it as much as you should be realizing. Like, like when you take a loss and you lose, the reason why I don't let it get to me is because I realize where I come from. I realize how far I've gotten and how far I still need to go. Like, I, it's going to be a year since I started competing in June. Like, I still have a long, long way to go. A long, long, long way to go. So, yeah, we'll see how everything goes along the, down along the line. Like, next year could be a lot different. The year after that could be a lot different. And the year after that and so on. So, it's just a long journey. This is just a long journey. Yeah, and, and it's about that, like, enjoying the journey as it happens. A lot of people think about the end goal, but are you enjoying this fight by fight and kind of taking it all in? Fight by fight. That's all I'm doing. All I'm doing is taking it all in. Like, I'm not in no rush for anything. I'm just going fight by fight. Yeah, because you're quite young, and there's like that. There's, there's a fantastic amateur scene out there. There's a lot of good fighters within your, your weight class as well. There's also opportunities in the UK. There's so many shows here. There's a there's a lot you can do. You just mentioned obviously you started competing a year ago from June, so you're gonna have six fights within a twelve month period. Are you looking to mimic mimic that for the next twelve months? Yeah, like by the end of this year, how many fights do I have this year? I've had one, two. This will be my third. Possibly get another four or five fights before the year ends. That's what I'm looking for, anyways. If it goes higher than that, then it goes higher than that. Yeah, no, that's that that is quite good and it is quite ambitious. And with the amount of shows that we have, though, do you, I think it's completely possible. Like, how do you it feel is, about having is. all these shows? It is completely possible. And another thing, like I said, Darren, if he said it before to all of us, like if really if we really want to take, he get us matched up every second week. Like that's just how many shows there are at the moment. Like it's just it's easy and hard to get matched up at the moment. It just genuinely depends. Like. For Michael, like I stepped in last minute. I don't know what the story is with nobody stepping up to fight. I don't know if nobody was around. I don't know what's going on. But yeah, like it's a hit or miss. Like it's either fighters are there or fighters aren't there. Yeah, I thought it was a strange one as well. And it happened on Chaos as well for the Bantamweight belt. They found yeah. it really hard to match for that. And then this is the Featherweight, which is there's a lot more kind of fight. There's just there's quite a few fighters in both divisions. I don't know whether it was people who were pre booked yeah. or. I, I, that's one of the issues I do have with the shows at the minute is this, they're week after week and sometimes even day after day, which then means a lot of people can be booked up. And then if you're at the end of that, which your is, um, if a fight falls, if this fight falls out, a lot of them have only competed last week or the week before, so they might yeah. not be ready to compete. So that that could be one of the issues with why it is. But what was your reaction like once you found out? You could get fight on short notice. Did you just go, yeah, let's go? I was happy. Like, uh, literally, text me asking, do I want it? I think it's good. I think it's some get your name out there. I said, yeah, let's do it. Like, I didn't even think about it. Just took it straight away. Just took it straight away. And I genuinely felt like I see how hard Michael works. So I feel like he deserved He deserved it as well. But you can't just be training so hard just to not get matched for your first title fight. Like, can't. it's actually rubbish. It's rubbish at this point. Like, I yeah. do feel like there could have been fighters out there that could have taken the fight, but yeah, it is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah, and fair play to you for stepping up. And it sounds like the way you spoke about Michael there, that there, there's a mutual respect between these. Even though you won the fight, it was over. He said he didn't want to rematch, but it seemed like there is it, there is a, a mutual respect there that there's no shit talking. And I kind of I kind of like that going into a fight as well, especially at amateur, because you don't get paid for it. Like, is that your just general approach is, just go in and fight. You don't want any of the bravado on this. Just let you fight and do the talking. Mm, that's, that is my general push, to be honest. Like, I'm not one to shy talk. Like, the only way I'll ever shy talk in this life is if somebody starts any rubbish with me. But regarding Michael, like, he's a very nice, very, very nice guy. Like, uh, we talk online sometimes, like, little jokes and all that. Like, even after this fight, 
will probably be probably be even closer to be honest. Like you never know after the fight, get a drink or something. But yeah, but I do think he's a nice guy. I do think he's a nice guy. Like he's eighteen, still young, very nice guy. Yeah. Yeah. No. And then obviously, I'm gonna ask you just one or two more questions. I'm gonna let you go. And um, what's it like training with Darren? Uh, and having him as your mentor because I love Darren Sonic. He's been very good to me, and he seems to just. He gets very animated, and you can see at the side of the cage, but that obviously is because he cares so much. He knows what you're capable of, and if you don't do what he knows you can do, you can see, obviously, he gets visibly animated. What's it like having Darren Sonic as a coach? One in a million. He's one in a million. Like, you can't you can't get anybody like him, to be honest. Like, what he's willing to do for you, just, he's willing to sacrifice. He's willing to put it all on the line for you, like, and, yeah, like, ever since I started, he's been looking out for me. Like, all I can ever do is really thank him like this. There's not anything I can really do in this life to give back what he, all the time and all that, that he do be giving into us. Like, because this is a sacrifice. You don't know how much hours and all that, even with Cage Legacy for himself, like, you don't know how much hours he's putting into us, the rest that he's getting, like, not being able to recover and all that, because all he's doing is working all day long. Like, so, yeah, like, it doesn't go unnoticed. It doesn't go unnoticed at all. Yeah, no, and that's that's quite good because, like you said, you know he's got K's legacy. When he's not training you, he's trying to get you matched. He's trying to come up with plans, a uh, game plan, and studying your opponents. There's, there's a whole lot in it. And uh, just one final question. Obviously, your brother just kind of came in last minute, kind of, uh, which he's done before. You're kind of mimicking him in a way that you'll come in and you'll fight anyone, whatever, whatever it takes. When you look at your brother's career and you look, he, he announced obviously he's going to go pro. Do you take inspiration for that? Because he came, he went from only coming in off playing the UFC game, giving it a go to being the best amateur within the country. Yeah, he like he's living proof that anything is possible. Put your mind put your put your mind into it, put your head down, work and anything's possible. Like anything is possible at all. Like it doesn't it doesn't matter how much experience the other guy has or anything like that. You go in with a certain mindset you're gonna get it done. So yeah. Yeah, no, I I'm gonna let you go because I know yeah. oh sorry. No, no, I was just saying, definitely take it in, yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. i got to let you go because I know you've trained. Thank you so much for your taking this time on Fight Week because I know obviously it's a big, big week for you and I really appreciate it. Is there anything you want to say for you or anyone you want to shout out? Thanks for taking me. Thanks to my team, everyone helping me with the training. I do really appreciate it. Never goes on notice. Pretty much it, yeah. Yeah, no, perfect. And I will be there at the show on Sunday, so I can't wait to see you fight in person again. Right. It's going to be an honour. I, I came in halfway through to Michael in your fight and I had a couple of drinks, so I didn't really get to to uh, watch it as I usually do. But today I'm going to be yeah. on, next, on Sunday, I'm going to be going up in full media mode. So I will see you then. Thank you so much again. It's been an absolute pleasure and I'll see you Sunday. See you Sunday. Thank you, Dave. Perfect. Thank you.